All right, everyone, so we'll be talking about our very first topics, why does your business need a blog? Let's do a quick exercise here. Um, if you load up your web browser and you go to a search engine, what's one of the famous search engines? Google. It's so famous that it's become a verb, isn't it? Google it, meaning to search for something. Uh, so, the Google company has their Google search engine, which helps you find stuff on the internet. So everyone's probably heard of and probably used Google. Do you know of any other search engines besides Google? Bing. If you haven't checked it out before, take a quick look at Bing.com. B-I-N-G. Bing.com. It's also a search engine. It's not as big and famous as Google. I haven't ever heard anyone say Bing it. They always say Google it, right? But they do have about 20% market share globally. You might not have realized that you use Google all the time or not even realize what you use. You just search. But Bing has very large market share, well, 20%. And it is very large because that means hundreds of millions, if not billions, of searches globally. Um, does anyone know any other search engines out there? Yahoo. I heard Yahoo. Yahoo.com is one of them. DuckDuckGo. There's another one called DuckDuckGo. Yahoo uh, is, is one of the older search engines that's still around. And again, you, you search in here uh, and you can get the latest results about everything. And DuckDuckGo, if you haven't heard of that one, DuckDuckGo.com, that's one of the newer search engines. Duck, duck, go. But basically, they're all trying to do the same thing to uh, give you results when you search for something. And therefore, there's a whole business, there's a whole concept of search engine optimization. I want my website to be found. I want people to search here for something like how to tie a tie. And you're going to get a variety of websites that all try to tell you the best way to tie a tie. And oftentimes, on the search engine, you'll get 10 results or so. DuckDuckGo is a little different in that it, it's got a long string of results. Uh, contrast that with Google, which is that you usually... How to tie a tie. You, you get results and then next page. And so how many of you, when you search for something, go to the third page of results to find your answer? Mm -hmm. Not that many people. Some people do, of course. Sometimes. Not that many people. A lot of times people uh, get the result that you need right on the first page. And that, in essence, is search engine optimization. How do I, how does my website, how does my content get to the first page of results? Search engine optimization. It's a, it's a large topic, but blogging is an aspect of that. Because blogging helps us create content so that when we search, or people search, if you have a blog post about what people are searching for, if you have a blog post on the concepts on the topics that people are searching for you might be found more much easier if you have a competitor you're both uh, a daycare you both created a website at the same time you both have really nice looking websites your website will be a step ahead if it has more timely content if both of you created it a year ago but you have been updating it, and your competitor has not. Your website could be found much more often than your competitors. So timely, relevant content. Look at this result here. How to tie a tie. Posted February 2nd, 2015. This is not a link from two years ago. This is a very timely, very new result. And this is from Esquire.com. So timely content. Yes? Did, did you set X questions after or during? 
Uh, during is fine. Yeah. Um, how often should you? That's one of the many things we'll be talking about, but that kind of depends on your um, how much you can write. Because ideally, how much, how often to update every day. But that's a lot, isn't it? So perhaps for beginners, to start off, one goal as a beginner, once a month. Blog, once a month. And again, I'm going to have a handout with all of these tips and such. But that's a very good point, because the question that always comes up, how, how much do I have to blog? How, how often do I do this? As a beginner, once a month is good. Once a week is better. Once a day is even better. If you have not added anything to your blog in three months, it's not so good. If you haven't added anything in 12 months, that's even more not so good. So, so I'm seeing I'm seeing these results from both the search engines, both of these search engines. Basically, these are all blog posts. I'm going to look at this one. How to tie a tie with a dimple? Gentlemansgazette.com. It says right here, blog, latest news. This was posted April 6, 2015, and it has 32 comments, and it's been shared 3,000 times. It's been liked 3,000 times on, on Facebook, and it's been tweeted 49 times. So this is what I'm saying about timely content, relevant content. This website seems to be all about style, and Obviously, one of the important aspects of style is how to tie a tie. So this website is providing timely, relevant content. Timely in that they put it out every once in a while. I'd have to browse the site a little bit more to see how often they're, they're publishing something, but I'm going to guess at least once a month. Uh, it's relevant in that I was searching and I found this result, and it's also relevant to a bunch of other people, and I can tell that by the comments. People are commenting, people are sharing and liking on social media. So the best way to learn about something is to see examples, to do research, to see what the competition is doing, what are they doing well, and then we can incorporate that. So I'll be showing you, of course, examples of, of, of good blog um, tactics and so forth, but just looking at this one randomly, I'm seeing a lot of things that stand out. Again, I'll have a handout for you, but let's take a couple notes here. I just found this one. I had not seen it before until I came into the class right now, but I'm seeing things that stand out that are, that are relevant for a good blog. Like I was saying earlier, timely. You want to publish content on a regular basis. Notice we've got, what would you call these words here? Accessory, Gentleman's Gazette, How To Media. What would you call these things? What's that? Keywords. Keywords, possibly. Any other term? Tags, that's another term, sure. Maybe also categories. Basically ways that this blog is organized. So organization is very important. Um, this particular blog post is categorized or organized into, into, a variety of, into a variety of sections or categories. Our best articles, men's fashion book guide, accessories. So we'll be talking about and we'll be practicing organization. Can they also be considered like pages? In a sense, yes, because what happens is if we click on one of these tags, it loads a page with many more blog posts with that keyword. So in a sense, it's also a page. And the good thing is that WordPress and Tumblr will make this page for us. We just have to actually categorize things. So we'll see how to do that. What's that? <laughs> well, advertising, uh, just like TV is free, you just have to suffer through the commercials. Uh, the internet is free, and websites are free, but there's going to be advertising. So uh, many of the examples that we'll see often have advertising, and you uh, most likely will not, but uh, advertising is a way to generate some revenue for blogging. Sometimes people come into these classes that they want to blog and make money from the blogging. And it's possible, but oftentimes that comes from advertising. Uh, that's a different can of worms, but we'll get to that. 
this uh, other good things that I see about this particular post, I can clearly see a byline, meaning who is this by? Who wrote this? Sven Raphael Schneider. This has an, an author. Someone actually wrote this. A little more importantly, I'm able to click on their name and that shows me a page with the other articles, the other posts that Sven has written. What I'm getting at here is a human face behind the words, creating content that has a particular voice and a character that doesn't feel cookie cutter, that doesn't read like a boring kind of blog post, a generic one. It has a voice that fits with the character of the site. If your site is very laid back and, and has colloquial speech, and then suddenly you have a blog post that is very technical, there's a disconnect there. You think, well, how does that affect SEO? We'll talk about that, but just keep in mind, a person uh, that has a byline on the blog post is a good tactic for SEO. Question? Yeah. So, actually, I was thinking when I looked at that, that Jolene's Yvette would be some kind of a product to be selling. Did they see me as being a in a sense is sort of a digital magazine right the magazine would in a uh, in a sense it's a digital magazine because if we if we buy a magazine subscription the owners of the magazine get paid and make revenue here well with a variety of re of, of methods one of them perhaps being advertising, they're putting out a digital magazine and they are making money off of their website as a digital magazine. You'll also see other websites that are trying to sell a product but then supplement a blog. This one feels much more that it is a digital magazine that is a blog. Um, it seems to be a larger parent organization because I took a quick look at another blog post and I see it's a different author. Okay. So it's not just the same one person blog making all of these blog posts mm -hmm. question can I do bilingual you can a bilingual blog would be probably very useful for your audience and we also have to think in those terms am I writing content for my audience will my audience care and so if your audience is bilingual it might be very useful to write a bilingual blog and we'll be able to do that with with uh, with WordPress and Tumblr definitely Unfortunately, you would need to have a person, yourself or someone, actually translate both languages because we can use the machine translators, but we know how those are. Those, those often so don't make sense. Right yeah, there's no real um, high-quality translators just yet. Perhaps in a few more years they'll get better, but still, uh, these translators don't know slang and they don't know idioms and, and customs and so forth so it is better to have people translate to the different languages but it is obviously double the work so notice right next to that we've got another very uh, useful aspect of blogging for SEO a way to share on social media it's not just about writing your blog post and expecting people to come to your site and always stay on your site. We want them to be able to share your content to where they're at, hanging out on Facebook, hanging out on Twitter, and so forth. Question? Sorry, kind of going off of what she was talking about, if you're going to have a bilingual website, mm -hmm. um, is it better to have uh, one language be one, one blog be one language and the other blog be the other language and then just have it? Like do you mean like literally I'll have um, victorsbakery.com and victorspanaderia.com? Like literally two I'll different. Two websites together, but maybe um, you have an option to switch languages, uh -huh. or should you do the blog 
That's completely up to you, although I think it's cumbersome to have both languages on one blog post because you have even longer. Mm -hmm. But is there any like, SEO advantage to doing them separate or having them together? I think there is also more of an incentive for better SEO to keep them separate because then it's different content for a particular audience that cares about that particular content. If you mix them together, you're kind of muddying your message and that might affect your SEO. So it is better to have the two separate posts, one English, one Spanish, or whatever languages, to keep them separate. Okay, thank you. So uh, the social media aspect, this particular one has a way to easily share, and then also these on the side, I believe those are, yeah, so all of these are, notice we've got uh, like on Facebook, pin it on Pinterest, tweet it on Twitter, um, share it on Google+, stumble upon, and this other one, I don't know what that one is, uh, but a bunch of social networks, or also email it to someone, and so forth. So having the ability for people to share your content on social media is also very important for SEO. It lets people be your cheerleader. It helps, it lets people be your advertiser. Uh, they will share to their friends on, on Facebook and maybe they'll see the blog post and they will also come back to your site and read your blog or buy your product or whatever it is you're trying to do on your website. So social media is a big aspect. As I browse, well let me do it this way, I'm going to zoom out like this. At this point it's not very readable, is it? But I can see that it is divided into sections because I've got these these bold sections, kind of like my syllabus. In a sense, you could sort of think of my syllabus as a blog post or an article in that from a distance, even though you can't read it, it's divided into sections. And you might care about the section, well, what are we going to learn by the end? So you jump to that section and you read it. Or maybe you're interested in what's my contact information. There's a section on that. So all of this content could have been written without any section dividers, and the content would still be there, but it would be a little bit harder for the reader to really read it and understand it. So this blog post also follows that. Sections are divided with heading text, with text that is bold or larger than the rest. And from a distance, I can see that, and I can jump over to how to tie a tie with a center dimple or with a side dimple. So it's sort of like how chapters are divided in a book. It's annoying to have a book that just goes on and on and on with no chapter divisions, right? We want to have some divided content within our posts. We'll see how to do this, of course. Everything that I'm talking about is theory right now, but we'll do it in practice. But the concept is divide the blog posts as necessary with headings chunks of information. Studies show that people don't quite read non-stop anymore. They skim, especially websites, especially something on your phone where maybe it's a little harder to read but you want to read something, you're gonna skim it and something's gonna catch your attention like a heading. That's relevant to me, I'll read that. This, uh, it has some pictures, so pictures are also important with, for good blogging practices. Pictures, um, unfortunately the, the example that I'm showing you here is very busy because it's got some pictures but also a bunch of ads. But ignore the ads for a moment and just the, let me see, can I do this? Just the main article, yeah, like that. Just the main article itself, if I focus on it, it's got a heading picture text, another picture down here, and then the article is over. So pictures, relevant pictures, are effective blogging because, again, people are going to be skimming your content. I know that we have the, the idea or the dream that people are going to be in love with our blog and read it word by word, and maybe they will. But if we make it easier for people to digest and to read and then want to come back to keep reading, the better. And one of the techniques is a nice pretty picture once in a while. 
a picture that doesn't distract, that doesn't take over the whole design, but is relevant. So I've got a few pictures. And this one also has a video. Video is becoming a very important aspect of all online, of, of all search engine optimization and marketing. That obviously is much more effort. Even though we might all have a cell phone in our pocket and can record video, this video here is probably very well produced. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie a dimple in your tie knot every single time. It just happens to be that way, um, especially when the tie knot is rather it's slightly different every time. And the three-dimensional sense, it's elegant, it's slightly different every time. So obviously that's much more effort than just simply turning on your, uh, your phone and recording someone talking there. They had a little intro animation, they had music, they have music going throughout it, they've got different cuts and angles of the video, obviously much more work. But studies are showing uh, people are really liking video a lot. Uh, so even though this is a blog post, it still incorporates a video because it catches people attention, people's attention. Notice it's only three and a quarter minutes long. It's not going to be a 10-minute epic on how to tie a tie. Three minutes is enough. One minute might be enough. Uh, so that, this is a big, uh, big endeavor and, and something to ask for, but perhaps thinking in the future, perhaps sometime I'll start to think about adding video. To my to my blog posts. If not, that's okay. There's still many of other many other techniques that will help us um, creating effective blog content. Just a quick show of hands. Does anyone have any experience with video editing? A couple people. Okay. Uh, if you don't, everyone else, maybe you want to hire these people to make you some videos. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. video. Do you um, have any thoughts on the differences between Vimeo, YouTube, or any other services out there? Um, they both have a very good, a very good, um, a, a very good reason. YouTube and Vimeo. That is, YouTube is so ubiquitous, and everyone uploads to YouTube mostly and uses YouTube no problem. Vimeo, in the best possible way, I think it's a little more snobbish, and. Vimeo, the quality of their videos often are are better, I think, because people spend the time to craft a video a little bit more a little bit more professionally on Vimeo. And the whole kind of culture of Vimeo is, you know, honestly a little snobbish. That their videos are better than the average video on YouTube. So depending on how you're trying to present yourself, you might decide, am I gonna be on the you know general population YouTube or am I gonna be in a slightly more elite Vimeo? Sometimes an audience doesn't realize or care as long as it's a video. There so, the other way. so I would think YouTube is a more robust search environment for people looking for how to find highest and they can find the blog. Yeah, that is that is a, a a statistic that I've been reading that YouTube itself is almost becoming its own social network and its own search engine. So you could potentially have much more traffic, yes, from YouTube. But if the point is, I just want to put a video up on my website, either the place that you store it at should work, because they'll both give you a way to embed your video onto your blog. So it's just up to you to decide which one you want to upload it on, basically. Does it matter if it's your video or can you video? Um, that's sort of a hard question to answer. Ideally, and for what we do with our clients, we post only original videos because that avoids issues of copyrights and trademarks well, I mean, and all of that. Yes, well, of course, if you have permission, then that's good. But think about this. You are giving the other person more positive SEO by using their video. You're helping their website and their content rise because you've used their video. So if you use your own videos, that's going to help you. That's going to help help your search engine rankings. And again, obviously, this is much more work than writing a blog post. So for the time being, sure, with permission and so forth, use someone else's video. But ideally, eventually, you want to use your own content. Yes. I was just going to say, is it 
uh, my website, my YouTube videos rank higher on Google than my actual site does. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using YouTube videos to try to direct traffic to my site. Mm -hmm. Because I think Google um, values um, the sites and its like, ecosystem much more than other sites. So I think it puts a higher Supposedly not. <laughs> Supposedly Google is not favoring their own services and actually in Europe Google has been in a lot of trouble because they've been seeing that you're searching for something and a lot of the results mysteriously are coming from Google properties and in the European Union at least they've taken them to court and Google has lost. So who knows what's going to happen in the US. But at the moment it does seem that uh, yeah, if you favor putting your stuff on Google properties, perhaps you will get more results when people search on Google. But again, Google is not the only search engine. There's also Bing, there's also Yahoo, etc. They don't have 60% market share like Google, but you might as well be targeting or be in as many places as possible to try to get as much traffic as possible. Is it, is it worth our time to create YouTube content and use, to use as an SEO tool? Definitely. Definitely, but again, it's a big endeavor. This is this is not easy like writing blog content. It's you have to shoot the video and edit it, make it professional, good sound, titles, and all of that. But in short, yes, it is valuable to uh, to get on YouTube. And remind me later on, I am going to be teaching a social media class this summer where one of the topics we talk about is YouTube. So you'll be able to learn some YouTube basics and make a video and so forth and get on YouTube. Yes. What do you think you can at social media class at night or during the day? Um, I have to check. Uh, I have to check my contract. Well, we have to look at it on the website. So ask me again a little bit later when I look it up. Uh, I'm not sure. So. No, nope, I don't teach any Saturday classes. Someone else might. I'm at the beach on Saturday. No, I'm. I just. I'm not. I don't teach on Saturdays. Um. Okay, other things that are relevant in this particular post. Um, notice, I'm reading this particular paragraph and then I get to a point here. To make things easier, I created a video where I show you exactly who a dimple is tied, how a dimple is tied, and what options you have to create your unique knot. It works with any of the tie, no matter whether it's silk tie, knit tie, wool tie, etc. And notice those are links. If I hover my mouse over those, they're links. Specifically, internal links. If I hover my mouse over a link, the web browser at the bottom tells me where it's going to go. If you never noticed that, before clicking a link, you can see where is the link going to go. The web browser tells you that. And I can see here, this, these are internal links. These are links going to other blog posts within the same site. So that's very good for SEO. Links within your own blog. The purpose of that is someone reads this particular post, they want to continue to read more of your content so they can easily click and read another post. The point of that is to keep people on your website longer. Why do you want to keep them longer? Well, what are you trying to accomplish on your website? Let's say I've got a web design company. Ultimately, what I want from people that visit my web design company is to hire me as a web designer. So I'm going to be writing blog posts, maybe giving free advice, and as people read this blog post and read another one and another one, and they start to see, perhaps he knows what he's talking about, perhaps I'll hire him. So whatever you're trying to accomplish on your website, the longer you keep them on your website, the better that goal will be accomplished. Am I trying to get hired as a web designer? As a caterer? Am I just trying to get my book read? Do I want more subscribers so they continue to read my book chapter after chapter, week after week? Am I trying to get more donations to my nonprofit organization with all of my success story blog posts? So internal links help that. A link either in the text itself that they can click on, or oftentimes you, you see Something like, you might also like, you know, this sort of section where it says, if you like this blog post, you might also like this one over here, Spring and Summer Accessories Apparel from 1932. Or this one about the tile, the tie clip and bar printer. 
So I read one and I want to read another one. Yeah, tell me about the cashmere knit tie. So then I go over there and I keep reading and then maybe eventually what they're doing here is um, you know, they're making money off these advertisements after I've read a couple of blog posts and I like what I'm reading. Oh, there's an ad for me to actually buy that. So the purpose perhaps of this site is for you to click on those ads so that they can make money off of that. So there's still other ones we can, other things we can talk about, and I'll have this this handout, this list for you. Um, but in general, we've talked about some concepts. Uh, we'll revisit them again about an effective blog post, and I'll show you more examples, and then we'll actually write and so forth. But uh, I'll take some general questions, and we'll take a break. Any questions so far? All right. So, uh, yes. So the author was Sven Raphael Schneider. Yes. He did the content. Mm -hmm. He did the photos. Uh, I'm not sure. Was his decision to put it on there? Possibly. Um, there could be an editor that is choosing that. Okay. But let's assume, yes, he wrote the article and he chose the pictures. And then he's also the one that decides um, that you might also like Bar. Possibly. Um, we don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding out who, where the stuff originates from. Like all the advertising. Well, that's a different. That's a different question. All of this content itself originates from the authors of this website, but most likely the ads, Crockett and Jones. That's a company itself, and. So do they have well, the most likely, they have a contract. This website contracted with these websites to put their ads on their website. And every time someone clicks on this, then this website will earn some money. Yes? My daughter has a blog, and apparently she's being fairly successful with it. She hasn't told me her secrets yet. But uh, I noticed that when I, when I first threw it that uh, she likes to show off clothes that she's interested in. And and she says that up front, but uh, I'm sure that they're connected to some sort of uh, monetizing effort on her part, kind of like an internal mm -hmm. store. She doesn't necessarily do, do the actual sales, mm -hmm. but probably links to... Most likely, yeah, if you could inquire on that and maybe get, get some insight and maybe share in class. But most likely something is happening like that because there's a lot of ways to make money on the internet, and there's a varying degrees of difficulty and oftentimes advertising is one of the easiest ways uh, so possibly there's some sort of revenue sharing there by she writing about these this is these are the clothes that I like and here's a link to buy them they're probably getting yeah, she yeah so she's probably getting some sort of uh, cut of that <laughs> exactly so let's take our first break and um, We'll continue.